How's it going guys? I'm your host Carbon Gaming. Welcome back to the next episode of the Let's Play Dragon Fable series. And for today's episode, let us go back to where we last ended off, which was uh back in Oak Law Keep, okay? So I'm going to use the timeline to travel. And the last part which is helping survey. Afterwards we'll go ahead and do the Rolive quest. And then we will continue with the main story, which will probably be about getting our baby dragon. Alright, so let's talk to surveillance. Okay, surveys camp. Alright, so this one we did not actually get to do last episode. Let's go ahead and do it. And can you walk into the tent? No. Survey. Greetings. I was told that someone was coming to help me out around the camp. Is that you? Something has upset the natural balance in Oak Law Forest. We have to repair it. Okay, see back. The Forest Furies have always been a dangerous monster, but they have never attacked without cause. But not long ago, several of them came into my camp and stole a large bag of seeds. I was using the seeds to test the soil's fertility. I can't get more seeds before the end of my end of the season, and by then, all my research will be wasted. I need to get those seeds back. All right, so let's get the seeds back. And uh, by the way, every time before I start the episode, I always do the uh, standard daily stuff. Uh, before I start the episode off camera because I'm sure you guys don't want to see me spending 5 minutes on that and that includes feeding the baby dragon as well as doing the daily quest now I said I should be doing this every day but you know I really just want to uh, play this journey along with you guys so I'm not going to do anything that's too much off camera I'm not really going to do some crazy grinding or like I'm not going to feed it every day or something like that it doesn't really matter in the long run but of course, like I said, if you are playing as a regular player instead of a content creator like myself, then you should definitely be feeding your baby dragon every day and of course, uh, going ahead to do the daily quest for your free dragon coins. Okay, so I've chosen to chain one more point in uh, protection. That means that I now get a heal uh, in my baby dragon. On top of that, I also have a strong dot. So the next one will probably continue to upgrade fighting and protection because these two are the best ones at lower level. Okay, you can eventually upgrade your magic or your assistance. Okay, mischief, it really depends if you're facing monsters with immobility resistance or not. If you're not planning on doing the in challenges, then mischief is... Uh, highly recommended because it means that you'll get another free stun in your baby dragon. Alright, so let us go ahead and fight Forest Fury. Okay, so let's do troll. Nice. Level 4. Okay, so once again, another quest that does not scale to our level. So this should be pretty quick and painless, just the way I like it. And as much as we are exploring the main story of book 1, I really want to go ahead and check out the uh, other side stories as well. You know, these small little side stories that you we used to play through so much back in the day because there weren't that many quests to go around, right? I mean, if you were like me playing as a kid back in the day, you see like there was this... Uh, little computer section in my primary school okay primary school is like grade one to grade six something like that okay if you're uh not living in singapore in an asian country okay so basically something like that and uh every time during recess there's this small little area whereby they had a whole line of computers you can go there during your recess time and you're basically free to play whatever game you choose to play on those computers okay for us our favorite was uh ae games which includes dragon fable mech quest and adventure quest or as we all know it as battle on okay back in the day uh back then when i first started aq wars wasn't even out yet so that was how early of a player i was okay and people would just rush there to play uh most of the time it was ae games and the other half was Y8 games, okay, Y8.com, people will play King of Fighters, Boxhead, those were the more popular games, alright. Hmm, it seems like they were just hungry, that's very odd. The Forest Furies usually eat the fruit from a huge mono tree in the woods. Something must have happened to their normal food supplies to make them so aggressive. If this continues, they'll come back for the seeds and they'll be even more dangerous. I'll stay here and guard the seeds, you'll have to go to the mono tree and find out why the Forest Furies aren't eating that fruit. So let's investigate the tree. So yeah, I'm just giving you guys a little bit of a story time on how I started off on this journey of playing Arctic Entertainment games. For those of you guys who are living in Singapore, you will probably know what I mean. Like, it was really the in thing for us 90s kids back in the day, okay? Y8 games and Arctic Entertainment games. Then uh, somewhere along the way, AQ Wars came along and 
more people started to flock to that game until now it's become even more popular than Dragon Fable and maybe even the classical battle on uh, but that was mostly overseas local wise I would say battle on is probably still the most popular one uh, out of all of their old games people usually know Mac Quest and Dragon Fable as well but battle on was the one that really uh, a lot of people know about and a lot of people played through before okay the old adventure quest classic games not to say that dragon fable wasn't popular but yeah and back then we were all just kids so nobody actually had a dragon amulet there was i remember there was this one guy that had the dragon amulet and we were like oh man this guy is such a freaking baller dude he was the only guy with a da account it was so cool to see him use the old dragon lord skills and access all the different areas of the game that we uh all of us peasants did not have access to coming from an asian uh country our parents were sort of like you know not quite open to the idea of buying virtual game stuff so none of us really had like uh, money for dragon amulet or dragon coins even if we could buy it we usually buy like uh physical toys which you can see and touch and play with as opposed to these sort of virtual items because you know parents back then they aren't really open to the idea of buying a virtual game currency you know even even nowadays i would think that is probably the case as well but you know uh i will say that most of us have already grown up and we are making our own money to go ahead and buy these upgrades ourselves right when it arrived at the mono tree it was being guarded by vermin and the ground had been picked clean of the fallen fruit Okay, so it looks like vermin is... The vermin are actually uh, stealing the fruit or something. Vermin, those filthy beasts, all they ever do is take from the land and never give anything back. They are the ones upsetting the balance here in the forest. You have to stop them. Go to their lair in the ruins and get that molo fruit back. Okay, so you can see here, quests back in the day, very short, very simple to understand. Low level monsters that help us get through the boring fighting quickly. At the same time, you uh, if you actually bother to read the story, it's easy to understand and really it's perfect for kids. Uh, AE was, AE's games are really uh, meant for kids, so I feel like a lot of their older quests are really show showcase that you know 90s kids like <laughs> like myself. Okay, playing the games back in the day, very very suitable for us, but. Now they've seemed to move towards a more adult tone and I think that uh, is fine simply because most of their audience like myself has grown up. Uh, it's not really seeing a lot of new players nowadays but uh, for the older players I like how that the game has actually grown with us players who have stuck with it throughout so it's really cool to see that. Okay. Uh, this being said though because of the fact that these mods quests do not scale to our level it means that level 10 we are probably over leveled for a lot of these quests and uh you just don't gain a lot of exp and go but that's totally fine you know because we are not in a rush to level up anyways and we don't really need a lot of gold now except maybe for stack training so yeah i am considering getting a doom weapon on this account and probably a destiny weapon as well but being a non-da it will be locked to the level 8 version but uh the level 8 version will actually go a very very long way at the lower levels if you're not like rushing to level up then uh, the level 8 version of the doom weapon will probably last you to like level 30 something or something like that because it's just crazy strong right continue doing throw ooh survive for 1 hit 3 hp damn you know this was what made the older quests so enjoyable for myself fast to kill monsters uh easy to understand quest line though granted i'll be very honest back then none of us really bothered reading we just clicked through the thing and then you know just played the quests for the general fun of it and to you know use our skills and then you know stab the monster all that sort of stuff you know what i mean simple joys you know as a kid you really find joy in a lot of the simple things i find it as an as a grown-up a lot of this uh is no longer that fun for me like it sort of lost its magic a little somewhere along the way and that's probably the case as people grow up as well but uh it's nice to see that these are the sort of things that make us happy back when we were young you know you find the fruit of the mono tree being stopped by the vermin in large barrels but every single piece of fruit is rotten oh boy that's not great okay equipment all oh, the mono fruit was rotten let's heal first the vermin are wasteful but i've never seen one pass up a meal they must have been letting it rot on purpose. I wonder why. I need to run some tests on this fruit that you brought back. But all my equipment is down by the river. Could you go and get it for me? 
And be careful, the first this far of balance is a much more dangerous place. Okay, so let's get the equipment for him. Now I sort of almost like that they are not updating the older presses. So for new players who are coming into the game, they can still, you know, enjoy this part. And even for returning players, maybe, you know, uh, you forgot your account after so long and you decided to start a new account to play the game. At least it is still something that we remember as opposed to the newer quests that keep getting updated. Like it's beyond, basically beyond recognition. Not that updating the quests are a bad thing per se, but... Uh, I feel that it's nice to have something there for the older returning players. Sure, some of them not up to standard. A uh, bit of grammatical errors here and there. Maybe the gameplay isn't as polished. Uh, artwork uh, not as great as what we see today. But it's something that the old players can relate to. And I really like that, okay? Especially now with COVID, there's like so many returning players coming back to the game. Not just for Arctic... Not just for Dragon Fever actually, all of AE's games in general, and I think that's pretty cool. Okay, so we'll continue to do troll. And yes, someone previously mentioned to me, I think it was on my Let's Play DF episode, uh, to put music. Okay, I have thought about that, but the thing is, sometimes, you know... <laughs> Uh, I just want to talk through it. Yes, I know there are some times where there's a long period of awkward silence and we are just battling through monsters, but I feel like it's better not to put music because most of the quests, they will have their own music, especially for the more updated quests. For the older quests, I don't know, but I feel like if I add in music, then it, will, it won't really fit in with the theme that well. And if there's music in between uh, the quests itself, I feel like that will be a lot better. Okay, so we'll just use whatever music the quests come along with. If it doesn't come with music, then I will try my best to talk through the quests. Maybe give you guys some story time like what I'm doing this episode so that there won't be a long pause without uh, me saying anything, okay? We have found surveys missing equipment, but it was a rough fight getting through the cave in the forest. The activity of the vermin must have really thrown things out of whack. Okay, burn it all. This is a disaster. When the mono fruit ferments, it takes on special properties. Produces a chemical that will make people very suggestible. It's a mind control serum. I don't know what the vermin have planned, but we got to stop them at all costs, or else we will all end up slaves to those rats. Go to their tunnels. Bin you see? Uh, another one of those spelling errors over here. The ruins. Find the rest of the mono fruit and burn it. Every last barrel of the stuff. Burn it all. Let's go. Oops, forgot to heal, but it's fine. And if you see here, there's a lot of small little easter eggs, like look at this door, shows a potion, right? If you walk through it, you can find a healing pad. Okay, the I'm not sure if all doors are accessible. Yeah, this one isn't. Okay, so you see this one, if you're opening your, if you're keeping your eyes peeled when you're doing the quest, then uh, you, will know, you will be able to spot the healing spots. Though, I would think that if you're, once you're high level enough, you don't really need the healing spots like what I am right now. You hear players of unusual size. I don't think they exist. Okay. And oh yeah, one more thing is the updated quests make you level up a lot faster. You can see here the older quests, they don't give a lot of EXP. That's why there's so many of them. Because you actually have to do quite a lot of them in order to level up. Okay, uh, I feel that it's okay if the monsters are like these low level, don't have a lot of HP. You know, it makes the lower levels kind of fun in my opinion. Even though you have to fight through a lot of them in order to level up, but at least they are easy. I would rather take, like, especially if I'm a new player to the game, I'd rather take fighting like 100 easy monsters as opposed to one super hard monster where I'm constantly struggling to beat it, you know. Not that the new scaling level uh, are actually hard to beat, they just have a ton of HP and in general are very, very uh, tedious to deal with. Yeah, that's the one I'm looking for, tedious. Okay, Alchemy Lab Rat. So this is our boss right here. Ooh. Wow, he hits pretty hard. Oh, he's level 10 as well. Okay, fair enough. You can use the heal here. You can see heal uh 14 HP heal. That's pretty decent. But man, if you guys are struggling with this boss, then upgrade your endurance. That's really one what you want to upgrade. So you can have enough HP to survive through the boss, okay? And with the baby dragon pet. Wow, this guy hits like a truck. 
Okay, you can stun him. Of course, story bosses don't usually don't have any immobility resistance. So you can stun, you can shield. It doesn't matter what base class you are. You should be able to take care of him if uh, you use your stuns and your shields, if you're struggling, that is. And yes, done. Deep in the tunnels beneath the ruins, you'll find the rest of the rotten mollow fruit being guarded by a vermin alchemist. You have destroyed the fruit, but you have found a mysterious note. Interesting. Another mage sketchbook. Okay, let's access the shop. Great job, the balance of nature can be restored now thanks to you. I know that I can trust you. I'll trade some items that you can use in exchange for pouches of sparkling sand. Oh, okay, so we have a cape here. Helm. Oh, the helm is pretty good. Uh, 3 of the main stat, 2 to darkness and light resist. Okay. How many? We only have 2 pouches of sparkling sand, unfortunately. Yeah, that's what it was used for. Interesting. Okay, so maybe if we get more along the way, then we'll use them. Otherwise, I'm not going to quest for the sparkling sand uh, solely because of that. Yes, I have. Ooh. Lock book. Okay, all of these are... All of these are weapons that... How do you call it? Uh, only for DA players. So if you're not a DA player, sadly, you won't be able to get this. Let's just look at it. And look at that. The old artwork of the past. Shellac. Ooh, this this hour is actually pretty good. And some weird level 60 items here. When did these get added? Sun Tome. Hmm. Where do you get the Sun Tome again? Light Realm. Is this new or recent? Ooh, I didn't know this, but I think this was probably added recently. The artwork looks pretty recent to me. And level 60 items, what is it doing over here? Okay, interesting. Let's go ahead and sell off uh, some of the junk that we have just for a little bit of quick money. Okay. 10 gold, not a lot, but better than nothing, I guess. How much the. Okay, 8 gold each. Alright. And now let's try Rolif's quest, okay? Uh, Give it a try. Level 10 required. Bandits are a big problem around Oak Law. We've got a way to help cut down their numbers, though, if you want to lend a hand. Let's give it a try. Here's the plan. You set up a nice little trap. You direct the knights to corner the bandit and then you take them out. You set a bit of a treasure chest with some gold in it. You add whatever gold will win off the bandits to the pot and try to lure bigger hits. Ooh, nice. If the bandits get to the gold chest though, they'll take as much as they can, carry and escape. Whatever's left when you're done is yours. Nice. Let's get started. Good luck. Oh, this is interesting. Wait. Ah. Oh, it's like a game of chess. Very interesting. Wow, I forgot this existed. Up, down, left, right. Okay. Oh, you can't move diagonally. Okay. Nice. So it's like a game of chess. Wow, this is a very old mini game that's long forgotten. Very interesting indeed. Okay, now it should be cornered, right? I move onto an enemy. You're supposed to corner him or something, right? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, basically just corner the guy. Alright, fair enough. He's going to move down. I feel like the right move will probably be move backwards. Yeah? Okay, this guy will move here. And then this guy will move here. Hmm. Okay, it's getting us nowhere. I felt like I made a wrong move. Damn, okay. I probably made a wrong move. Yep, I did. Okay. Damn it. Yeah, I'm not really good at this. How do I quit? <laughs> no! Okay, let... 10 go just like that? Why do you have to be level 10? Are you even doing any fighting? Interesting. Okay, let's do this again. I did something wrong just now. I, I screwed it up just now. Okay, we need to choke him so he doesn't get far. Right. Okay, good. This is good. So now we move this here. Basically, we are cornering this guy. Yep. Make sure he keeps moving back. He can't move diagonally though. Ooh. 
Man, I messed up again. How do you do this? Or do we wait for him to come to us? I feel like the right way to do is wait for the Okay, I, I messed it up again. Damn. Oh. Okay. I feel like this is a very simple game, but I am not thinking hard enough. God, what am I doing? Okay. Now he can move up or down. Okay, he has chosen to move up. So we'll move here. And we'll move here. Great. Now what do we do? This guy move backwards. Hmm. Not getting anywhere with this. He's going to move forward, isn't he? How do we do this again? Damn it. Goodness gracious, I am dumb. I am so dumb. Okay, what if we just move up and down? He's moving forward though. Just move up and down. Can we trap him or something? He's moving up. That's good. Means we keep going up. Okay, so what? He's stuck now, right? Oh, okay. Wait. Okay, hold on. You can't let him get to the end point either. Man. How do you do this? It's four squares. He can move. It's... This is not possible. Come on. Okay, I, I am just very dumb. Or maybe you try and corner him or something. Maybe you try and corner him. Okay, now he's cornered. Now what? But we are cornered too. Okay. He's cornered. Uh, if I move him here. And if I move this guy here. He moves down. Okay. Is he, I feel like he's going to move forward the next step. This is not working. God. Let's just do the next one. Okay, this one is definitely possible. How do you get past the first stage? I don't understand. Okay, the second stage is easy because there's choke points like these, but... How do you even get past the first stage though? That's my question. Oh, okay. 213 HP. Okay. No wonder you need to be level 10 and above, but... How do you get past the first stage? There's four tiles. It's practically impossible, right? Ooh, this guy is super hard too. Okay, I can see why level 10 is required. So once you corner him, you have to fight them and... 73 health. This is crazy, guys. Can someone tell me, is it possible to get through the first stage without the bandit stealing any gold? Or am I just a super bad player in general? It doesn't make sense, because there's 4 tiles, but you only have 3 knights. How do you move in such a way whereby you can block him off completely? Let's like, see here. Once again, there's another choke, which means I am able to block him off completely if I want to. And then we'll just go in front. 
Just let this guy move one round. Yep, okay, he's done. And you get a full heal too. Okay. Let's stun him. Alright, so... Uh, I feel like this little chess game is actually quite fun. I actually did not know of this game. I think I have played through it like... Once before. Very, very little though. Um, The more popular game was Fires Over Outlaw. I played that a lot back in the day. That was like the way to grind defenders medals back in the day. At least that was how I did my my stupid grind like i just found that game very fun but for this chess game i think i played through it once or twice but i wasn't a big fan of it the first part though can someone please let me know how do you do the first the very first level and how is the first level harder than the second and the third levels i do not understand or is the bandit just meant to get the gold from the first level is that how it's supposed to work okay this is If he goes down, you have to make sure he doesn't go down. Okay. Nice. Right, so let's battle again. Days. Oops. Should be using Lash. Miss Quick over there. How many levels of this are there? I mean, this could go on forever, right? But I think there should be a limited number of levels since it is like a chess thingy. Well, actually having quite a lot of fun with this game. Oh, man. <laughs> All the hidden old unexplored areas of Dragon Fable. Yeah, maybe we won't be doing the main quest today. I mean, you guys probably seen and done it yourselves like a million times already. Is it more interesting to find these sort of small, fun little mini games? Yeah, I think it's quite a fun game. I wish Dragon Fable would uh, introduce more of these mini games in the future. There was a recent one about the puzzle puzzles one, when we, which we had for last year's Lucky Day, but I think that was a little bit too complicated for people, and in general, a lot of people didn't really enjoy it. So you can add mini games, but don't add those kind of puzzle games. Like in my like for myself personally, the genre of games that I hate the most are really puzzle games. Okay, so uh, yeah, how is this possible once again? Once again, I am questioning how is this possible? I think you have to drive him upwards so you can force him into a corner. Hmm. Okay, I. This is the correct play, I believe. No, now he's moving downwards. Damn. Okay, now he's moving downwards. Not good. It's basically a deadlock now. Yeah, if if I don't move where he moves, then he's going to run past me like that. And yeah, I lost. Wait a minute, hold on. Yep, I lost this. I lost this round. Ah. Okay, so that is it for the mini quest, uh, for the mini game actually. How many levels of that are there? I wonder. Okay, uh, there's still a little bit of time. Maybe we'll do one main quest. Let's go to Robina. Robina should be the next part, right? Wait, this is... Hold on, hold on. Okay. Wait a minute, let's just go to hometown. I'm not sure how to go to... I think running here is faster than traveling to Green Guard on the map, right? I'm not entirely sure. Wait, no. 
sorry, it should be going to Sherwood Forest. Talk. Okay, Quests. Give till it hurts. Give until it hurts. You did great taking the chest of gold from the bandits. Now we're going to give it all away. Go knock out some random forest creatures and put a gold on them. What? You don't? You didn't think I was serious? Where do you think all these monsters got gold from in the first place? Okay. Give until it hurts. Uh, you're basically supposed to kill all of them. I'm not sure why there is so... Or at least knock them out. So I'm not sure why you have to knock them out before you give it back. I guess you can't give it to them nicely. So after you knock them out, you dump the gold on them. Uh, this doesn't make a lot of sense to me for whatever reason. But yeah, why are you giving random monsters money? What do they actually do with the gold anyway? Basilis? Do they like... Can they like buy food using the gold? What? Can you like buy a can of worms for five gold or something like that? <laughs> I don't know man. <laughs> it seems like a very weird concept to me. Of giving monsters back their gold. Like, it doesn't make logical sense. And for this quest, you basically just kill everything and you are done. Okay, so there's three areas which you have to go to. The first is the cave here. You don't have to do them in order, it doesn't matter. You just have to kill all the monsters in the quest and no, you cannot avoid any of them. Unfortunately. These guys used to be able to stun. I don't know if they can still stun now though. Yeah, I think this attack was the one that used to stun us or something like that. Was I wrong? Were they able to stun before? Or were they not able to stun? And it's kind of weird that... Okay, we are not getting any gold from this, which kind of makes sense since we are giving the gold back. But, uh, law-wise, it makes sense. But in terms of, like, uh, gameplay-wise, that's not very nice. You know what I mean? Man, these monsters are hitting a lot harder than what I remember. Did they used to hit that hard? At this low level. Level 7 monster dealing, like, 20 damage. If you didn't have your stun skill, your shield skill, or even your, or even train up some endurance, then you're in pretty big trouble. Okay, so do as I say, not as I do here. Um, I can afford to do this because I know what I need to do and how much damage roughly can get them down. So I don't really have to use the stun skill unless I need to. Since my stun skill doesn't do any damage, it's faster for me to just you know cut through all of them. And I can always heal up with the 2 HP potions if I want to, so that's it. 32 damage, wow, that's pretty insane. Okay, so one little trick here, heal up outside of battle if you can afford it, so you don't have to waste a turn healing up inside of battle. Okay, just go to your back and click on one of your potions, okay. Don't be hasty, don't click both at the same time, chances are you, you won't, uh, you will probably overheal. More than what you need to and you won't get any extra health from the overhealing so try not to do that unless you are like super low on hp okay i uh, apologize my phone is ringing god okay that is oh there's a healing pad here okay actually you don't need to use the health pot but whatever the healing pad is kind of slow anyway that's actually my friend looking for me to play another game. So once I'm done with this video, I'm done editing, I'll probably go ahead and call him back. <laughs> right. Let's do rapid. Boviox. Can you go down? Is there a pathway for you to go down here? Or is that it? Okay, you do get quite a lot of EXP for this quest, I guess, but not that, uh, no go at all. I mean, instead of dumping the go on random monsters, why isn't Robina just giving it to, like, the poorer people or something like that? What is the point of giving monsters back the go? What do monsters do with the go anyway? I don't know. Man. Now 
Now wrap it. Let's do it. Nice. Okay, looks like we don't have to go down here. And there we are. A few bites and scratches later, you have placed all the stolen gold onto the forest monsters. Now that you have accomplished your backwards task, go see Vabina for the black dragon box. Yeah, it seems like they weren't too happy to go. Why else would they be attacking me, right? <laughs> okay. So anyways, we gave it back to them. Whether they like it or not, they will shut up and take the money. Okay, and that's going to do it for this week's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you have, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe to this channel. If you guys like to see more such future content, till the next time, I'm your host, Carbine Gaming. Peace out.